Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations, everybody. So, last episode, we uh, we didn't make it all that far, mainly because nope. there's a lot of intro stuff. And also, I'm going to keep track of the time that we're doing on my phone, so we hopefully won't go over time. That'd be nice. Anyhow, we're cross-examining Phoenix Wright again today, who's kind of a doof back in the... Uh... Apparently. <laughs> so, alright, let's get started, shall we? Truth is, I went because he called me. Oh. Have you ever met the victim before then? No! Never! But that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is... The girl. My, um, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my, um, sweetheart. Sweet. Well, what? What was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm. So it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. Okay. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated that you should meet at 245? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. Hmm. You said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. What? Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. An alchemist? I see. I gotta admit, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange medicines that run on high voltage electricity. Or hmm. strange machines. Medicine okay. doesn't run on electricity. <laughs> oh, ho, how fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details? About the timing of the meeting? Ooh. About the pharmacology department? For forget about it! <laughs> Probably the pharmacology department. Because he mentioned that he worked with lots of things that had high voltage, and if that's the case... <laughs> well... I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. Uh, I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said that the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high-voltage cables everywhere. High-voltage cables... Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high-voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3 o'clock we split up. 15 minutes, okay. So, what was it you were talking about? You know... <laughs> that maybe we should hang out again sometime. Again? Hang out again sometime? I wish that were true. Well, if it's again, that means we found the contradictions. <laughs> then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. So you say you went back. Um, yeah, that's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright? Why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up. <laughs> true, that's true. <laughs> Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this. I've been taking Cold Killer X for the last two or three days. It's rather unusual to catch a cold at this time of year, isn't it? Yeah, I always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? What do you mean? That is not a weird time to get sick. I feel like I always get sick, like, between May and June. At least once. By the way, for those who don't know, in Michigan, May, the transition from May to June is basically from winter to spring. <laughs> it is, basically. I suppose common sense is not always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. 
But I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime the day of the accident. Oh, on the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest! Wow. Mmm, her mini omelets are magically delicious. <laughs> no! Well, why did you punch me in the jaw? <laughs> oh! I'm so sorry. I just felt like hurting somebody all of a sudden. <laughs> wow, Mia. <laughs> I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle, either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. <laughs> what? what do you mean? <laughs> the judge never says that. I know. He's like, oh, it must be true because you fixed your testimony for the fifth time. <laughs> and now this, he's this time he's just like, yo, this is stupid. <laughs> the judge does get um, more Some clueless more as the series goes on. This is a flashback case, so he's probably a little smarter now. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's older, too. <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. It doesn't matter! Just They're how, friends! Just how was the victim electrocuted? Machine. I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? I have a theory. Another theory here. What? He broke, he broke up with this girl, or the girl broke up with him somehow. He's so sad and depressed, but he wants to pin the murder on the new guy because he's so mad about it. He somehow makes a machine that's like small enough that cannot be seen, and then makes it look like the, that Wright electrocuted him when in reality it was okay. like something. Maybe like his watch or something. Like <laughs> he's like a James Bond villain now. All of a sudden, he has his own laboratory. <laughs> this is like Dexter's laboratory, basically. Except in college. Except in college, which is <laughs> he's terrifying. He's the smartest <laughs> you'll ever see. <laughs> well, that is, I. You are correct, Your Honor. How exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. Established murder method can't right now. I mean, I don't know. Can't? Hmm, I do have one idea, but it would be impossible to prove it. Mia, dear, if you have any ideas, now is the time to present them. I don't have any ideas! Mr. Grossberg! Remember, silence is not golden. In court, anyway. Silence is not golden, huh? Well, in that case... Your Honor? Y yes Miss Faye? I believe that if we were to piece together everything we heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. Wow, that's a smirk. <laughs> Th that would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand that the basic rules of the court, yes. An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Yeah. Hmm, of course I know that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. I'm <laughs> He was wearing an attorney's badge, and, uh, it conducts electricity, so... <laughs> Um, okay, let's let's look at everything. Just, yes, show me- no, no. next. <laughs> Fatal electric shock. No. Look. This is like- is this like a back alleyway? I need to know this. Um... What's that thing behind him? Like the black thing? Yeah, with the- it's it, it looks like eyes. No, no. That thing. What's that? It's like a window. Oh, that's a window. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> it's back. a robot. He looked like a, a robot. With a stun gun. <laughs> <laughs> you think you... Okay. His watch was stopped... Wait. I'm gonna turn my head around. His watch was stopped at three? No. Stopped at... A little after three. A little after three. Okay. And then... Cold Killer X. Yep. Is there anything in there? Medicine. Besides medicine. Like, nope. is there, like, a weird, like... I don't know. Stun Knife. gun. <laughs> Is there a stun gun? Okay, no. Next. And then Von Karma came up and stunned it. Found clutched in the victim's hand, covered in Wright's fingerprints. Could we just look at profiles? Sure. Wowzers. Nope. 
Nope. Maybe... See, I want to prove that he made machines and that he could have been like... You're, you are the determined thing. to prove this Bond villain thing, aren't No, you? okay, <laughs> here's the thing. I don't know anything- I don't know anything about this kind of thing. Um, if you are working with, like, high voltage, mm -hmm. and you're working with machines, um, is there, like, a way that, like, energy can be stored up on, like, your hands, for example? Is there a way to store energy, like- So, you know how, like, if you- it's like, warning, high voltage, if you touch it, it's like, it could hurt? If you, like, are you able to store that on your body without getting hit until later? Because my wonder is, you know how, like, when you rub your feet on the carpet yeah. and you touch someone and electrocutes? I'm the wrong person to be asking about this. Okay, that's what I thought. I'm just trying to... Science. I'm not good at science. But I'm better than some people, maybe. Um... <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey. Hey, electrocutes. <laughs> it was with Pain. <laughs> it um, can't be. <laughs> I know. I actually am not sure here. Really? Okay. I don't- maybe I'm overthinking it. Yeah. It's really- Is it simple. just like the cables electrocuted him? Is that it? Okay, it's pr it's probably hard to see from where- there's a spark coming off of that oh, electric yep. cable. Oh, yep. It is really hard. I can't see from here. Okay. Because of how the glare works on your computer. As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? What? But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm. I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? Oh, well, okay, we got it. C elementary. It's the umbrella! <laughs> well, naturally, it's right around here. I think. Miss Faye, I'm deeply disappointed in you. I'm disappointed as well, Miss Faye. To be honest, I'm a bit disappointed too, Mia. That's you! Ugh! I need to use my brain on this. Come on, Mia. You can't strike out here. In your brain. Exactly. <laughs> oh, you actually didn't get penalized. Yeah, for it's that. still early in the game. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's. that's. what is that? A severed. Yeah, severed. Severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard? The machines and the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then, the high voltage cable? Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of the death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm, that certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne? What do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been of high voltage cable. What else would it be? However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant. Achoo! That would not. There's... No. Hmm. That much is certainly true. <laughs> yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Oh, really? Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. Y you do? In well, what is it? Why didn't you say so in the first place? In reality, just Wright goes to jail, he's guilty, but then comes out two years later and starts becoming a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> that would be interesting. His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. Fine. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. I don't know that, but okay. Ugh! You mean... Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own this hand. This could be... I mean, he's over the age... Assault. Easy, but no, this could be like your. You know how. Oh, hey man, nice jacket. Pat, no, Pat, no, you know how it's like. There's the accidental death where like you push them and then like they fall onto cables and electrocute themselves. Where it's yeah, not that's really common. <laughs> that's not what I meant. What I'm saying, like, there's like you know that sort of like child, like like when we thought that um what's her face pushed someone into the jousting 
um, sort in, <laughs> yeah. in the second case. Yeah. The like that, game. but but of course she was underage, so it would have been fine. Phoenix is like college, so. He's 21, so he's, he he's being drink. tried by a full adult. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright would could have left a print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. First of all, health code violation. I'm it would not be. Duck. What? Okay. <laughs> no, wait, that sounded like Toad. Hello! Um, the. What was. Okay. <laughs> exactly. You can't have a severed cable just hanging around on campus. That, like, they. <laughs> That's a health code violation. You need someone to go and fix that. I think it's a safety violation, not a health code violation. Oh yeah, health code violation is for like restaurants. Where yeah. It's like, hey, your meat's been sitting out. Okay. Order, order, order. That's enough, Marty. Stop talking. <laughs> I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with this cross examination. What? Garbage. Stick a fork in us. We're done. No, Mr. Grosper. My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over. Man. No! I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No! No! You're wrong! Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Your Honor! At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this ah! case. Do you have something further to add, Miss? Yes! <laughs> Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But I... I can't. I, I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. M Miss Faye. No matter what it is you have to say... I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. He looks terrible. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There is no further need for him to say anything. <coughs> what? Wait a minute! Mr. Wright. I... I'll tell you what really happened. Okay, I guess. <laughs> but I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need to for further. <coughs> uh, I... I did it. Oh. Well, that's easy. I admit it. I pushed him. Oh, yeah. It's my fault. It's my fault that the Doug Swallow's dead. Dude. It's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but it's okay. <laughs> that girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. Y you're lying! Just listen to me. There's something that you need to know about that girl. She's a psychopath. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! What? That doesn't even make any sense! It's a... Po the, the wires are high up! Did he push him off the building and crash onto the... <laughs> the wire? <laughs> Maybe the wire is already broken, though. Like I said... What you just said. Was that the truth? Y yes I... I was afraid... afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure! Uh... Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are! <laughs> but please! Please give me one more chance to explain! This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. Thanks, Faye. It it'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I... I believe in you! Oh, um... thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Uh, it feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem shake. Enough about your butt, okay, dude? <laughs> Seriously, we don't want to hear that. When I push, push the, the victim. victim! Oh, that's my favorite pop song. <laughs> that guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. I mean... I lost my temper and gave him a shove! At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just laying there, d dead. Well, that... Okay. <laughs> that doesn't mean that he was dead when you first pushed him. That could True. mean he was just like, bleh, and then as soon as he left, he was like, <laughs> and like, tased himself or something. <laughs> Why would he do that? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he was so sad that he wasn't with Dolly anymore, and he was just like, no, man, no, man, you can't be with her, because I... It was six months ago! <laughs> 
people don't get over that quickly. Apparently. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. I have a squeaky voice. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow fell back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock. And that, as they say, is that. Hmm. A simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But, but when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. Exactly. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even if doofus like him couldn't miss that. That's a great spelling of doofus. I was like, duffus. A duffus. Duffus. I'm writing Caius as a dumbbell on the temple wall. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Miss Faye, let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he's innocent, then there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. I think we're gonna get to the first to be continued uh, oh. before the episode's over. When I push the victim. Whoosh. Just press him. That guy, he was talking bad about dogs. Hold it! <laughs> so, what kind of things was did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly! He said that she was a bad girl! She might be. Um, is that all? Yup! <laughs> well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favors here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just... I just... I lost my temper and gave him a shove. Can you tell me about what happened in a little more detail? Th that guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when... That's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy! Yeah, there's no wires! I just gave him a... light gentle shove to the chest. <laughs> I'm sure that's what happened. <laughs> and when you did that, there were no severed cables anywhere to be seen? Right! There was nothing like that at all! But is it possible that you merely overlooked it? Well... I guess it's possible. No. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like cheap asphalt! <laughs> I believe what's important here is the moment the push occurred. Let's continue on with the testimony, witness. I love how nothing bad for your client's case gets added to the testimony. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> After that, I heard a kind of loud noise. A loud noise? And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Ray? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. Bang. It was like a snap! You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. A snap? <laughs> You're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. Ask for more details? Leave it alone. Here's the thing. If Let it's a it snap... <laughs> if it's a snap, I think what happened is he fell over, maybe... He hit a twig. It could be a twig. It could be like he hit something and then, I don't know, maybe it activated the... I don't know, he, he's like a... He's like a laboratory... A pharmacology... A pharmacology dude. Maybe like he had like a switch and he looks like he's dead but he's just like, bing! And then like the, the cable fell. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> I don't know! I'm just thinking aloud. That's like a Mega Man level um, right there. Yeah, that is kind of... <laughs> Uh... Made by the same company. Oh yeah, Capcom. <laughs> what else did Capcom make? Oh, didn't they make, um, Seasons and Ages? Yeah. Wow. They helped make Seasons and Ages. Uh, we need more details. We always need more details, I guess. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Aha! Could it... Could it have been... Yes, could it have been? Hurry up and tell us! When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. More like it vaporized from that. He fell right on top of it, and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did that umbrella belong to the victim? 
Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail, kind of like the owner. Wow. That's totally uncalled for, Phoenix. Hold up! But the umbrella was on the other side. It wasn't underneath him. It's true. Then again... Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. And the cold. Hmm, Miss Faye? What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well, yes. Of course it's important. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, this cheap umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. Ha! How perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. Yay. After I shoved him, he, he fell on top of his umbrella. Perfect, that's what we're pressing. So, Mr. Swallow fell on top of his umbrella, and you are certain of this? Yeah, uh, it was right there under him. Actually, if it hadn't been under him, I was planning on borrowing it for myself. Wow! <laughs> that umbrella, you mean? Well, yeah. You see, I was wearing this sweater here. Dolly stayed up late for, at night at a time knitting it for me. I didn't want the rain to dampen the handmade symbol of her love. Yes, my stomach is not to be used as your personal soccer ball, Mia! Yeah? Ah, oh, I'm so sorry. Continue on with your testimony, witness. <laughs> Mia really doesn't like the lovey duffy relationship, apparently. Mia is actually a lot like Maya. <laughs> in a slap! In a samurai <laughs> kick! In a that was Cody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Maya did, like, kick Phoenix a bunch. <laughs> Waving the broom around. Waving the broom around. Oh, <laughs> evil match! Straight! <laughs> yeah, that was the best. After you shoved the victim, did he leave the scene? Or did you <laughs> leave the... Did, <laughs> did he leave, leave the scene? Yeah! Right? <laughs> well, he didn't go <laughs> after! <laughs> <laughs> After you shoved the victim, did you leave the scene right away? Yes, I did! I admit it, I, I was furious! You left without even checking Mr. Swallow's condition? He's fine! Well, um, yeah, but like I said, I got worried about him later. So I went back, but he, he was just laying there dead! It was the same spot? At that time, did you see anyone else at the scene of the crime? <laughs> um, nope, nobody. Jeez, could that stupid cough possibly sound any phonier? Hmm. In that case, it's very hard to believe someone else could have been the murderer. Unless we can find something that shows his innocence from that testimony, my dear, I'm afraid the judge will make his final decision we with no remorse it out. whatsoever. I'm smart. Yes, sir. <laughs> right now, I need more info. Info that will help me turn up some contradictions. Yeah. I'm so great at this game that <laughs> I already figured it out. <laughs> yes, totally. Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that... I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. Well, what do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. Y you're absolutely right. This conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! <laughs> Oh, this is good music. This is really good music. Order, order, order! The victim, he moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? Well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present it as evidence immediately. Umbrella Ed, this is oh, the court record. Oh, well, we got it. B but the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. Underneath him? According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. <laughs> I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. <laughs> no! However, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. Love that run on sentence. Phoenix's testimony added to the court record. Well done, Mia! 
<laughs> Stop laughing like the Mr. Payne, wish. what are you chuckling about? Uh, pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Yeah! Exactly! And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Perfect. Hawthorne? You don't mean Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place, so... Your whole premise about, oh, it had to be Phoenix. He was the only one there. Oh, yeah, because the witness who was there saw the whole thing. <laughs> Wait, so they were arguing. <laughs> Hold up. They were like, oh, you shouldn't date Dolly. She's right there. Hi. <laughs> Hi. They're like going off on a date. And he's just like, get away from that girl. And then, Dude, I want her back. No, that would make so much sense why Phoenix would push him if she's right what the there. Heck, what the heck? You're dissing her right in front of me. <laughs> Wow. What? <laughs> Great job. <laughs> I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Hair flip. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. <laughs> she and Marty have both been waiting to talk to her. You can't be serious. Yeah, what do you mean by that? I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20 minute recess. 20 minutes? That's uh, the longest I've ever seen. Other than the time. Half hour. Other than the time where Gumshoe was running down the freeway and got. Running? <laughs> not running. Running like his car running. Not like. <laughs> oh, not like. Cut her! Cut her! Cut her! <laughs> Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Great. Yeah. Fabulous. April 11th, 11.52 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Miss Fay, uh, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I, I... It's all right. At least you told the truth in the end, Mr. Ray. Yeah. So I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy! You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. B but... But the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me! I just know she will! Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She- she's the love of my life, that's why! The love of your life? Huh. Would you mind telling me more about you and Miss Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure! No problem! Blah 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 blah. Dahlia and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. What? Okay? Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. Yeah. Anyway. One day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave this to me the day that we met as a symbol of our love. The day you met? <laughs> She'd been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle, bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, all right. Makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. What if it's like a mind control necklace? <laughs> <laughs> and you really just You're just it. jumping right there, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> dolly is present oh, borrowed from Phoenix Wright. It'd be interesting. <laughs> it would. Um, anyway... So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating? Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. Um... <laughs> Are you, like, mind control tonight? <laughs> no, I'm just... I'm trying to imagine... Is she a robot? Because if... <laughs> well, as Wayne taught us, like, everybody's a robot. <laughs> no, but I'm trying to imagine, like, wow, this has been such a great date. Please give me this back now. Like, every time she talks. <laughs> no way, dude. <laughs> By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? Y yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th, right here in the courthouse. 
What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse? M murder What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Maybe she's just a freaking murderer. <laughs> Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. Well, if that's the case, why would she wait eight months? And I think I understand why you suddenly took on such a keen interest in this case. You believe there's some relationship between these two cases, am I correct? What's it called? The newspaper six, clipping added seven, to the court record. Five case. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I I need to finish this myself. Ah, uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look at the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, looks like recess is about over. We better all get past? moving. Hang on. So, got a bunch of stuff. Umbrella, owned by the victim, found broken near an electrical pole at the crime scene. Okay. The victim fell on top of his umbrella. Nope. There was a loud sound when this happened. Nope. Small bottleneck was given to write on the day they met. He shows it to everyone. Newspaper clipping an article from <laughs> August 20... No, that... That's, 8.28. Yeah, August 28th. Almost eight months ago. Check the court record for details. Murder in the courthouse? Very little information is being disclosed at this time, since the victim of yesterday's incident in the district courthouse cafeteria is said to have been a lawyer. However, police are questioning the 19-year-old female college student who was sitting with the victim. Well, it's probably the same gal. <laughs> probably. Alright, we better get moving. I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes No, ago. it didn't. It seemed like two minutes. To be it continued. Was. So, yeah. That's it for this episode of Trials and Tribulations, everyone. Thanks for watching. I know I'm having a blast doing this. I am, too. I'm so excited for the next time. <laughs> You're already thinking of yeah. probably a voice to give Dolly, aren't you? Maybe. I don't know. I ha I'll have to see how she behaves. She's like smoking a cigarette. Hey, guys! <laughs> <laughs> no, well, the way that Not they're Dahlia. like, she's so shy, but she's pretty. And the one picture that I saw, I'm like, I have kind of an idea of what I might do, but I'm not positive. Okay. Well, look forward to that. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day, and God bless. Bye. <laughs>